So in this video we're going to show how to disassemble a hard drive and subsequently put it back together. Now for this all you really need is just a screwdriver using a number three style Torx bit. Now some drives might have a slotted style screw head on one part of the head but this one just uses all the security screws using a Torx. And the drive that we're going to work with is a C8 750 gigabyte Barracuda SATA drive. And this one is the same one that I showed in an earlier video that had the, the head making all kinds of noise and things like that because it's obviously faulty. So what we're going to start with is actually on the bottom side we're going to take apart the control board and remove that from the drive here. And it's very simple to remove. Just find our security screws, start taking them out. And there's our control board removed from the hard drive. As you can see, we've got several ICs on here, including things like resistors, transistors, a couple of other components that all operate things on the hard drive. And these ICs also contain the processing instructions and self-test diagnostics that a drive will run before it will ever actually interface with the computer, plus handle all the channel configurations through the communications and power settings. Now on the other side is just pretty much your bare board. These are your connection pins that operate your drive head. And then depending on the board, this is where your connections will be that operate the stepper motor that runs the platters. And usually there'll be some kind of foam insulation or something like that on the underside of the drive so that this board does not ground anything on it to the case of the drive, causing it to short out. Now again, this is a SATA style board, so you got the SATA style connections. Older style hard drives might have boards like this. This is an IDE or PATA, which is parallel ATA. This, of course, that we use modern day is serial ATA, and this is parallel ATA with the familiar IDE pins where a ribbon cable goes and your four pin Molex power connector plus our pins for the drive select, making it primary, secondary, cable select, things like that. So, got our board and we'll put that aside. Now we'll focus on the main drive. And you can see the little ribbon cable that connects the stepper motor power to the input pins there. That, of course, connect to those pins that I showed you on the serial ATA board. And here's your connector that connects to the head inside which moves the head back and forth based on what's sent through that. So we'll move on to the top head of the drive. Now usually you'll find at least six outer case screws. In the case of this one, this has seven. The one that people tend to miss is the one that puts the drive head in place because there's always a security screw for the drive head and it's usually hidden under the label. And usually you'll miss that. So if you take the screws out and you can't get the cover off, usually it means there's a screw under the drive label that you need to find. And it's right there. So we'll take that screw out first. Now we just lift off the cover. And when you lift off the cover, you might hear an air noise like it being sucked in or something like that. And that's because all hard drives have some kind of silicon seal put on it. Hold it up to the camera here. Of course, I got the camera facing the other way, so I got it. Line it up. There we go. You can see the seal that runs around the side here, and even one for around the head. And so this helps it have an airtight seal. 
So it, it's to keep things like dust particles and other things out of the hard drive. But also having it in a vacuum means there's no air inside to cause friction while the platter is spinning. Because if any of you have actually opened up a hard drive and put your hand near it while the hard drive platters are spinning, you might actually feel air coming off of it. And of course that's friction of the spinning platters against the air. So by keeping it under a vacuum, there's no friction because there's no air. Anyway, now we're inside the hard drive again. Here's our platter with our spindle motors holding it down. This is our read-write head. And then here are our neodymium magnets, which are controlled again by our control board through that little section that you can see right here. And then there's a ribbon that goes to it. Now, in order to access our platters, we need to get the head off, because otherwise there'll be no way to get it off because the head needs to come out further. So we'll work on that first. Now, if you're someone that's trying to recover data off of your hard drives, the way they would do it is they would take the platters out and put it into another working hard drive of the exact same model. So if I found another 750 gigabyte C8 Barracuda drive that was operational, I would take the platters out of this one and put it into that one and see if I can read the data off of the platters. That's how drive recovery works. They'll take the platters out of your bad drive, put it in one that's just like it, and see if they can get the data off of it or not. But if you're doing this yourself and you're going to try to do that, obviously make sure that you're wearing some kind of gloves like nitrile or latex. And also do this in a very clean environment because, again, you've introduced air and airborne contaminants into the drive the moment you take the cover off. So most people don't have a clean room or anything like that, so just try to find a really good environment, like if you've got an air cleaner or something like that. Because, again, the moment you take that cover off, you expose the drive to the elements, and that pretty much will render it useless over time, if it's a good working drive. Anyway, let's see if we can get this head apart. First thing I need to do is get one layer of these neodymium magnets off. And let's see, there's only one screw that holds that on. Let's see if we can pull it up here. In this case, I'm going to use some pliers. Now, since I don't care about this drive, we'll be a little more vigorous with it. But what we need to do is get this one neodymium magnet up and out. Like that. And neodymium magnets, I have to advise, are very strong. So just keep that in mind. Get that aside. And now that we've got that off, you can see our head can come all the way out now. Now this head integrates a mechanical lock with this here. Some other hard drives actually have another item that's usually screwed into the side around here that acts as the locking mechanism for the drive head to keep it from coming out this far, in which case you'll have to take that out as well. This is integrated into the neodymium magnet here. So all we had to do was take that out. Now, some heads will also just slip out. They just slide on a shaft. Okay, so we ran out of battery in the camera and I wasn't paying attention to the battery level. So I plugged it into power now and now we're resuming. So again, I left off with the arm and I was saying that on some drives, these arms are just slid onto a shaft with a bearing and they'll just slide right off. This one here is fastened down. It's actually screwed in place onto the drive. And this is one of those examples where I was saying that it may have a slotted head somewhere in it that you need to use a slotted screwdriver for. And in the case of this, it's this. It's got uh, a place to put the Torx screw in there for the cover, but we need a slotted screwdriver to take this up and out. So we have to screw it. But before I get to that, I want to take out 
the control board section for the drive head. Otherwise, it's going to pull on it the moment we try to take it off. And then we grab this piece here and just wiggle it so it comes up like that. And again, there's sort of a little bit of a seal around there again. Keep air and dust particles out. So, I'm going to find a slotted bit here. Change out the Torx bit that's on the screwdriver. And again, you also want to do this with the head out here because that head is actually lifting up. You don't want these heads to be pushing against the platters. And there's our drive head. Comes right out. Now, I'm not going to worry about taking this magnet out. It's pretty much easy to pull out and it's self-explanatory. What we're going to show now is removing these platters out of here. Now I found on some hard drives that these platter screws may be one size smaller, so they may be a T2 size Torx, which means you'll have to have a number 2 size Torx as well. These are still number 3 on this drive, so we don't need to change it. We get all the screws out. This ring here will come right off. Of course, the fingers are a little slippery. There we go. There's the top of the ring. It goes on there, and then we can lift out the platter. And there's our top drive platter. Now, as I say, if you're actually doing this to try to recover data off the drive by putting these in another working drive of the same size and class, obviously, as I say, to be a little more careful with working with the drive than I am, and also wear gloves to not put fingerprints on it and to work in a clean environment. So that's one. Anyway, this drive, this actually has additional mounts to secure the platters in place, so I need to get these off as well. And now that we've got that out, this cover lifts off, and this platter will also lift out. And as you can see, we have a separator ring as well. So there's always a separator ring between the platters that gives them that spacing for the drive head to get under them. Get that one. And then we have this one. And another platter. A little pinky to get under here. You know my fingers are a little slippery today. have better fingers. As I say, since this drive is damaged and I'm not trying to repair it, I will just do it this way. There's our next platter and separator ring. And then our last one of these. easier the first time I was doing this. <laughs> we can do it that way too. And there's our last platter and separator ring. And then there's our spindle motor. And you can see the mounts down there. And that's it. We've pretty much taken this drive all the way apart. 
So we've got the drive casing. We have all the platters, various mounts. We have the control board. We also have the top of those platters. All the various screws our drive head and the plug for that and lastly our cover with our silicone gasket so now we're going to go in reverse and we're going to throw this all back together so let me find a platter a separator ring and one of these Another platter, another separator ring, and one of these, and a platter, and the top one of these, and another separator ring, and a top platter. And then our ring that goes on the top and line it up here. And there's our platters back together. Now let's focus on putting our drive head back in there. So, we'll drive back over here, where it's central to the camera. So here's our head. And again, this one is screwed in place, so it doesn't have a rod. So we'll have to seat it on there. Get her hit back in place. Now this has got a little point on it, so I gotta get it lined up. Let's cure that in place. Here, headlock works. Does. Now let's stick our cover back on. And lastly, we're going to reattach our control board. Which faces here. Always make sure that the chips face out. And there we have it. Our drive is all reassembled.